Yes, yeah, so I've been in HR all my life, which is quite a long time now. Um, I deliberately chose to come into HR. I know some managers, they are pushed into it, but I chose it. I think it's a wonderful career. It's a wonderful profession because it's about people. And in the end, organizations are all about people. I've specialized in learning and development, management development, organization development. I've worked in many large companies and some small ones. And I've worked as a, an employee and a director, and I've been a contractor and a consultant. And I've been fortunate in my consultancy, I've actually worked on six different continents around the world, which is great. Um, and it means that I've been able to meet people and I've been able to uh, uh, relate to people in different contexts, different cultures, their food, their dance and drama and music, and also the different way that different organizations use HR. The second half of my career, I worked in universities, working with master's level students, managers um, who are wanting uh, a professional qualification and membership of uh, an institute. Um, and then uh, five years ago, I went on a, a workshop called HR Analytics. It didn't even make sense. Because in my experience, HR and analytics, they're usually poles apart. But I thought this is fantastic. So I went to the workshop and I found that people were in two groups. Those people who knew a lot about HR analytics and have been using the big information system platforms like SAP and Oracle and Workday and other uh, HR information systems. And another group of people who said, oh, no, I don't do anything with analytics. So I thought, right, I've seen the future. And um, I decided to start the company. And I've spent a lot of money and a lot of time and effort putting the company together. So that's mostly uh, my background until about three years ago, which I can tell you about in a minute. I think um, quite a lot of organizations have quite a lot of data, but they don't know how best to use it. And uh, some HR information system platforms, they're very good at producing data. Um, personally speaking, I think that HR is very skilled in one particular area, and that's telling stories. We're very good at telling stories. Storytelling is very important. And many people in, at board level they haven't got time to read all the data, to make sense of it, to understand it. But when we can tell stories and then back it up with the data, that has a lot more meaning. Um, let me try and give you an example. Yes, I, um, there are three big uh, discussions that people have had in the last year or so. One is employee engagement, another is diversity, and obviously staff turnover. Um, and there's lots and lots of data about this in organizations, but it's about making sense of it so that we can use it. I talk about a pyramid. And at the bottom, there's data. This is just the numbers, the letters, the words, the spreadsheets, whatever. Then comes information. Now, information is using data in an intelligent way. So it's selecting data and interpreting it in the context of a question or a difficulty or an issue. It could be with recruitment or staff turnover, it could be succession planning or leadership, health and safety, whatever. So it's using the data in order to interpret it for colleagues. And then above that comes knowledge. And knowledge is the application of that information within a context and it's within the organizational culture, and it could be to do with benchmarking, it could be to meet the needs of the investors or the potential clients. So we have data, information, and knowledge. And then at the top of the pyramid, I talk about wisdom. And wisdom is about ethics and morals, an ethical and moral framework, because otherwise organizations can be tempted to do the right things for the wrong reasons. And we, we know, don't we, about some organizations which have hit the headlines in the media and they've just been plain wrong. 
and uh, they no longer exist because of the law or because of market forces. So I think to answer your question, data is essential now for the future, but it's what we do with the data which is more important than the data itself. Well, I mean, yes, hiring cost is one of many, many uh, data points which can be selected. Um, I always, there are many others like uh, speed of hire or cost of hire, um, or uh, uh, there's, I think there's probably about 15 or 20 different metrics when it comes to recruitment. And, and we, can, we can analyze these and, and, and that's good. However, I always look at it from another perspective. And I look at not just the quantitative, but the qualitative data as well. And the example I often give is uh, many years ago when I was head of learning and development for a very large telecoms company, um, my colleagues in recruitment, they would spend a lot of money and a lot of time doing CVs and interviews and shortlisting and getting people in. And they could analyze that well. My job in learning and development was not to get them in, but to keep them in. And that was the induction orientation process. That was the reskilling. It was the bringing them into the new culture. And if those people had spent so much time and effort, then they should keep the new employee in the organization. Unfortunately, so as you know, and and as our listeners will know, recruitment doesn't always go to plan. And sometimes the wrong person gets recruited uh, because the um, manager isn't right, or the department is wrong, or uh, they've over recruited and they promised them fantastic things and it's only a very low level job. And we call that the induction crisis where people leave within six months. And it wasn't the employee's fault. It was either HR or the manager or both. And so I think um, we can use data, we can use metrics and analytics. However, it's the application of that which is so important. When it comes to recruitment, um, for example, uh, we can measure how much and how long and how many, and that, that's great, but that often gives just a negative response. I want to put a positive spin and say, how can we do that better in order to improve